Okay, so you guys are going to have to understand this chart. First of all, what do these numbers represent? 18, 109, 160, 233. What do those numbers represent? This is the amino acid position. Mr. Vera, I don't understand what that means. Well, first we have to understand that our DNA codes for the messenger RNA, and the messenger RNA codes for the amino acid. So if your DNA, let's say, is GCG, what's the messenger RNA going to be? And then CGC, if you look at this, CGC codes for an amino acid arginine. So this is arginine. And then your next DNA, whatever those three letters are, are going to code for another three letters, which codes for another amino acid, and we bond them together. And eventually we get this chain of amino acids. So we have to understand, we're going to be looking at a chain of amino acids, two, three, four, of the light mice, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I want to look at the 18th amino acid in that chain, which it looks like is coded. That's the codon, which codes for arginine or arginine. So that's arginine. And then I'm going to skip 19, 20, 20, 20. Here's my chain. And then I'm going to look at what's the next amino acid. What's the next link in the chain that I'm going to focus on? The 109th, which is also what? It's also arginine. And then the next one is the what? 160th? It's still also, it also codes for arginine. And then the 233rd, which is GLN, which is glutamine. And then I'm sure there's a couple more. So now, guys, I want you to envision a chain with at least 233 links. Crumble up that chain into a ball, and that is your protein. We are going to unravel that chain and look at the 18th link for amino acids, the 109th, and the 160th, and the 203rd and see how it differs in the light mice versus the dark mice. So I want to look at the 18th link in the dark mice and realize that in the dark mice, there is a change, a genetic mutation in the first letter of the DNA, which changed the first letter of the codon in the RNA. So instead of having CGC, I have UGC, and if you use the codon, UGC codes for cysteine. And so that's going to be cysteine. Then there's another mutation on the 109th amino acid, which codes now for tryptophan. And then another mutation also codes for tryptophan. And then a fourth mutation, which codes for histidine. So if you look at the dark, this is what, cysteine? And then the 109th is what? Which one was it? Tryptophan? And then the 160th was the, what was it in the dark one? What was it? Nicole, what was it? The 160th? For the dark? What was the amino acid that it coded for? Huh? In the dark? In the dark? Dark? Dark mice? 160th? That's the codon. What did it code for? Yeah, but what was the amino acid? Tryptophan.
And then the last one was histidine. So there were four genetic mutations in the dark mice that changed four amino acids. So when this protein folded up, it's going to fold up totally different. It's going to have a different shape protein in the dark mice versus the protein in the light mice and now this is going to not this is going to reflect light a lot of light this one is not going to reflect light because of its shape so what i want you guys to do now is i want you to compare the dark mice in three other lava flows totally different to this lava flow this lava flow was the pinacate lava flow Compare the DNA in those four mutations to those. So do that right now. You should have seen this. When you coded for that, look, it's the same as the light-colored mice. All of these are the same. Let me kind of erase all this stuff. Okay, guys, what does this tell us? These three dark mice have the exact same DNA for the MC1R gene as the light-colored mice. Yet, they are what? I'm going to explain this best I can. Uh, so if you have a light color in a light desert, shh, you got sandy colored fur in a light desert, and then all of a sudden we have dark colored fur in a black rock, best explanation is natural selection. Due to predators. Okay, this is the explanation that the owls that are looking down upon those mice are eating those. So this is all about this gene encodes for this protein right here, this receptor, which plays a role in coat, uh, in coat color. In the data provided, the MCR1 protein in the dark rock collared mice from the how many mutations were there? There were four mutations. You guys, here's the four mutations. One right there. Oops, sorry. One right there, one right there, one right there, and one right there. Those are the four point mutations. Compare the amino acid data of the dark colored mice in the other three populations from the light mice. What do you notice? They are the same. So using the information, explain the evolutionary significance of the MC1R protein variations in the different mouse populations. 
What's the evolutionary significance of becoming dark? It's blending into your background and avoiding predators. Or maybe, you know, another evolutionary significance would be for heat, right? But in this case, it looks like it's most likely to avoid the predators of the owls. Explain the theory of natural selection. Remember, guys, there's two observations. In all populations, we have variation, and we have overproduction of offspring. Overproduction of offspring, that causes a fight for survival. Some of those members that have variation are going to have better adaptations. And over time, the descendants are going to look like those uh, parents that have those adaptations. We call that descent with modification. Explain each one of these in a sentence. We're going to be learning about other mechanisms of evolution in this class, like gene flow, genetic drift, mutations, and sexual selection. What if the female mice just preferred the dark colored male mice? What if there was a bunch of just random genetic mutations that made all the white mice turn dark? What if there was gene flow, a bunch of dark mice coming in from another population and migrating their way into that population? What if all of a sudden there was a huge volcanic eruption killing all about 98% of those mice, leaving only two mice alive, and those two mice happen to be one dark and one light? When they repopulated, you're going to see a lot more dark mice. So there's going to be a lot of other things that cause evolution that have nothing to do with natural selection. Number five, if you got a dark lava over here, dark lava over here, and a bunch of dark things in between, who's to say that a dark mouse that popped up here didn't migrate its way over here and start to populate a bunch of dark mice on here, right? That's another pop, uh, possible explanation. This is called gene flow or migration of genes from one population to the next. Ah. 